Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Health Lair Dr. Betty here. So today I wanna to talk about something that I've been getting a lot of questions about, medical school studying tips. So I did a live session about a month ago with a colleague and he asked me a question, how did you study for medical school? And my response was this, I can't tell you how to study for med school. What I can tell you is how not to study so that you don't follow in my footsteps. Why? Because I feel like a lot of times you hear a lot of study tips from people who have done extremely well in medical school. And so you kind of tend to be like, oh, well, if he makes it sound so easy or she makes it sound so easy, maybe I won't have to try as hard. No, this is a lie. And I will tell you why. Because I did not heed their advice, I myself had a tough time going through medical school. All right. And which is the reason why that I finally matched this year was because I had to do a bunch of things to improve my resume so that I would look like a better candidate. And because of this, I'm making this video. So before I start, I want you guys to subscribe to my channel and like and comment and all this stuff and follow me on Instagram and watch all my stories and all this stuff because I'm going to be posting tons of awesome content. All right. So before we get started on today's topic, I want you guys to do that because I know that you get super entertained and you won't forget because it happens all the time. So let's get started on a few tips on how to study medical school. Here we go. What are a few tips that I think you guys should be thinking about? I'm not gonna tell you what you should be doing, but I'm gonna tell you what I wish I had paid attention to, what I wish I had done, because if I had, maybe my course would have been a little bit different. Now, I don't regret my experience. I don't regret what I've been through. Why? Because that means that I can help current and future medical students hopefully not follow in my footsteps. Okay, so one of my biggest things that I wish I had done is use something called Anki. So Anki is basically a software that you can use. It's online. You can get it on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer. You can create flashcards front and back. You can put in images, you can put in videos, you can put in sounds, you can put in a bunch of stuff. Point is that this is going to help you study. It's going to help you with the repetition part of the studying in medical school. Why do I wish I had done this more? Well, I'll tell you why, because I was a huge, oh, I prefer index cards, flashcards that I write by hand. That's great, but I'm a much faster typer, meaning that I could basically create flashcards in a second. Whereas if I had done it by hand, I would have taken much, much longer. And when you're in medical school, you wanna use your time super efficiently. So for me, taking a long time creating flashcards became a waste of time in my perspective. And then I didn't get into Anki until well into my second year of medical school. And then I kind of stopped using it and fell off the wagon. So I'm going to show you basically how it works. I have it on my computer. I have it on my iPad. I don't have it on my iPhone because they charge you about 25 bucks. And when you're a medical student, your budget's kind of tight. I couldn't afford it. So I never got it, but let's go through why I think Anki is a really good resource. So I have my laptop here and I'm going to put the screen on my side so you guys can see what it is I'm doing. Okay. Um, so here we go. I'm going to open Anki right now. I'm going to go into my applications because that's where I saved it. I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to find Anki. I'm going to open it. Great. It's loading. Oh, it wants me to update. So I'm going to say no to that because it takes a while. So as you can see here, this is where it gets really interesting. You have a bunch of different kinds of decks you can create. You can create cardio. You can do infectious, pulmonary, and then you can open them and then you can do questions within them. So for example, causes of exudative pleural effusions, and then you think, and then you're like, okay, let me see the backside. And then you see the answers. And then on the bottom, as you can see, there are options. When you start, you basically have kind of like um, a day or 10 minutes or 20 minutes a day, two days, four days a week, 10 days, something like that. And then the more you do them, the more you repeat them, you are able to, if you want to, you can see them earlier. And if you want to, you can just not see them again by postponing them. You can even silence cards that you think that you're really good at already and you don't have to see again. So this is really, really useful. You can create new decks and I'll show you now. Uh, so say you want to add a new card. See, you have a front side and you have a back side. So you can put on the front a question on the back, the answer and the explanation, you can add it to whichever category you'd like. It can be pulmonary, it can be whatever. You can create a brand new deck name, uh, save it under that. Now, what I like about this is that if you're doing handwritten ones, you can't actually search for anything. You have to go one by one and find them. But in Anki, because it's a computer-based system, you're able to type in a word and voila, it pops up. You're able to find everything related that you have with that word in the card, whether it's in the front or in the back. 
Uh, if you put cancer, you see I have a bunch of stuff here. Thyroid maybe? There you go. Okay, so the point of what I'm trying to make is that this is why I think Anki is great because you're able to find topics really quickly and they're at your disposal immediately, which is going to make studying a lot easier for you. So what you want to do in medical school is make things easier for you. You don't want to make things harder than they already are. All right, so this is a great resource that I think I should have used. I wish someone should, would have explained it this well to me. I wish I had seen the benefit of it. I hope you guys do and I hope you guys do use it to your benefit. All right, tip number two is study with tutors and your buddies out loud from day one. Now, I, this is where I feel like I dropped the ball a lot because this is something I did very rarely, uh, if not at all. I didn't really like studying in groups. When you're in college, you don't really study in groups. You do everything kind of by yourself. I became an individual learner. When you're in medical school, you can't do that because you you can if you're good at it, but if you're, if you're struggling in classes, you have to change it up. You have to see what way in medical school you're going to learn the best, whether it's doing questions with tutors out loud so that they can help you. Why is this important? Because when you don't do well on a standardized exam, like step one or step two or step three, it can be because of one of two things. One, you don't know the material. Or two, you don't have good test taking techniques. Now, I used to be the kind of person that I used to say, I'm just not good at standardized exams. Yes, but there was a reason why, and it's because I had very bad test taking techniques. Now, what does that mean? Basically, you need to know what the question is asking you. You need to not get distracted by things within the question stem. You need to kind of figure out what it is they're asking. Yes, knowledge is important, but if your test taking skills are poor, you're gonna do poorly as well. So you need to work on both areas, and once you identify what those areas are, then it's gonna be easier for you to do better. Okay, so this is why doing questions with your buddies and tutors is really important because when you're thinking out loud, people around you are going to say, hey, no, you shouldn't think that way. You should be thinking about it this way or approach things this way. When you're studying with friends, it's kind of like it's teamwork. Your friends are better at some things than others and then you're better at some things than others and then you complement each other and you can learn from each other. This I feel like I should have used to my advantage and I didn't because I was afraid of people telling me that I didn't know enough or I didn't want people to know more than I did or do better. It's just, it's a huge individual personal mind game that you play with yourself and you avoid talking things out because you don't want to sound stupid you need to be able to make a mistake and it's okay as long as you don't make that mistake on the exam so make the mistake in person in public uh, in conversations with tutors in class that's fine but when it comes to the exam make sure you don't so take advantage of these conversations with your tutors with your professors with your friends don't take them for granted number three Review your concepts and apply them to new questions. So this is the whole reason why whenever you ask someone, how do you study for step one? How do you study for step two? They say, do questions, questions, questions. Why? Because you're applying the same knowledge that you learned in two years, four years of medical school to questions that you have never ever seen before. And this is when you're able to gauge whether or not you understand a concept. If you can apply a concept and get that concept correct, using that concept, you can get multiple different kinds of questions correct, you know you've mastered that concept. If you know a concept, but you keep getting certain questions wrong, it means you know it, but not as well as you think. And there's still time for you to, you know, reinforce that and strengthen that weakness. So this is really important. This is why doing so many questions is important because you're able to identify your weaknesses, identify your strengths. You're able to see gaps in your knowledge if you have any. Um, so this is really, really important for you guys to do that I wish I had done. I didn't take advantage of this. I didn't do questions because I said, I haven't reviewed the material. So if I do questions, I'm going to just, you know, lose them. No, that's not right. You're not gonna lose the question. You have so much to learn from questions, whether you know the material or not. Number four, this is what I'm talking about. Do not underestimate wrong answers. What does that mean? If you get a question right, your most likely uh, next move is to be like, okay, next, because I got it right. Wrong, don't do that. You're missing on so much information in those questions. In a question, you have about four to five different answer choices. And inside each answer choice, you have an explanation underneath, especially if you're using UWorld, which is a software that a lot of medical students and residents use to study for step one, two, and three. So when you're on UWorld and you see an answer choice and you chose the correct one and you skip it, you're missing the explanations of everything else. So within one question, you can cover a good amount of topics four to five, maybe even six different topics if you have six answer choices. So don't miss out on those. Look at the vignette and then you see, you know what? If you change this and this and this, I would choose this answer and this answer would be correct. 
if, if I would have changed this, this, and that, then this would have been the correct answer. Play with the question stem and alter it to fit different answer choices. This is how you will be able to master a topic presented in multiple different ways. So don't waste incorrect questions. Don't waste correct questions. There is tons of stuff for you to learn from every single one of them. I wish I had done this. I chose to do questions the day of my exams in medical school. I didn't really practice questions before and this was my fault. I thought it was like college and it's not. Okay, college and medical school are two different ball games. You can't approach them the same way. It's impossible. You're not gonna do well if you try to do that. Okay, so I hope you guys listen to my advice. Number five, choose your resources wisely. A lot of medical schools, including mine in St. George's, we had a bunch of PDF files that other medical students had created and added to and created uh, like Farm Ninja. And you created a, like a whole bunch of softwares that you could use or PDF files you could use that used a bunch of information and narrowed it down to maybe 10 or 20 slides of information for you to study from. That's great, that's great if you use it, but if you're gonna use that, plus your class notes, plus your PDF versions of your texts, and you're gonna do flashcards, and you're gonna do this, if you're gonna to have too many resources, you're gonna spread yourself way too thin. So pick your resources wisely. Don't use resources like Harrison's, which is a huge long textbook with a bunch of information. Unless it's a class assignment, I would suggest not doing that because there's way too much dense information in those texts, and it will pull you away from what is actually important for you to know. So use the class material to study, use your class slides, yes, use your flashcards, your Anki, all that stuff. Do go to groups, talk with your friends and your, and your tutors, and also find resources like first aid for step one, master the boards for step two and three. Um, all these things are going to be very, very useful, but make sure that you stay stuck to a minimum amount of resources, maybe three, maximum four, I would say so that you're able to really repetitively see information presented in the same exact way. That way, when you're going to take a question, take an exam, you'll be able to see graphs and you'll be able to see um, diagrams and all these different things with arrows. You'll be able to see it because you've used it so often that in your brain it's been ingrained without you even noticing. This is why using the same resources to study from is important because Obviously, you can add on to it by going to other resources, but make sure you stick to those primarily so that you're able to get the most benefit. Okay, so this is really important. Don't spread yourself too thin as in anything in life. If you're doing too many things, juggling too many things at once, you're going to drop a ball. Number six, should you or should you not do a review course uh, like a Kaplan course for step one? See, here's the thing. I feel like a lot of people have different ways of studying. Personally, for me, I need regimen. I need someone to tell me where I have to be at what time so I don't have to think about it. Other people love doing that themselves. They can wake up and they can say, today I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and tomorrow I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and then they're able to stay stuck to it. If I'm expected to be somewhere, I will be there. If I'm not expected to be somewhere, chances are I probably won't show up. So know yourself, know how you are, know what you need. If you need regulation and dictation and you need, um, basically a direction of what to do, then obviously, yes, of course, you would benefit from a Kaplan course. But if you have been doing this on your own for a very long time and you know you're good at it and you know you don't need a review course, you know that you can get information in, you're on your own and you'll be able to stay stuck to it and follow it through, then you won't necessarily need one. A lot of people ask me, how long should you study for step one? And a lot of people say, oh, you know, you should only study for six weeks, eight weeks, maybe four weeks. Uh, for step two, you study even less, maybe just four weeks. Uh, uh, for step three, you barely study. Well, you know what? I think it depends on you and your strengths and your weaknesses. I think it depends on whether or not you're scoring well on your NBMEs. So take those NBMEs if you're studying for step one, two, and three and believe them. Don't do what I did and not believe them because when you do that, you end up following in my footsteps and I had a bumpy road that I do not want you guys to follow. So this is why I'm making this video, all right? So take it from someone who heard this advice and chose to ignore it. You should not ignore the resources you have available to you. Do not ignore your friends. Do not ignore your tutors. Do not ignore your professors. If you have questions and you have no idea what you're doing and you're scared, ask a professor. They've been doing this for years. They will know how to help you. Don't underestimate their value. Last thing I will say about studying for med school, do not be afraid to change the way you're studying. Even if it's months into medical school, if you've been taking exams and you're not doing as well as you think, change the method of studying. Why? Because it's not working. Why would you continue to do something that's not working and hope to have a different result? That is the mere definition of insanity. And I did this myself. It took me a very long time to change the way I was studying for things. 
don't let this happen to you. Realize that you have a problem and you don't know how to address. Ask your professors, ask your friends, ask your tutors, ask for help. Do not do this on your own. Medical school is a team effort. Yes, you are there. You're the one showing up. You're the one studying. But there are things that are there to help you and guide you and support you in this journey. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, make sure you comment below. Follow me on Instagram. Ask me questions there. I'm super available to you guys. If I'm not doing something and I'm not busy, I will answer you as long as it's an appropriate message. Um, I also answer the comments down below. So if you want to ask questions here, if you have a request of a video, go ahead and ask questions here as well. Um, someone asked me what book I was using when I was studying for my step three, which I already passed. Um, so I'm not gonna have to worry about doing the residency. I have it here and I will show it to you. It's Master the Boards for step three. And I also used online med ed and their courses were incredible. Uh, I definitely suggest looking into those two things when you're studying for step two. Um, so bottom line that I want you guys to know is that there are lots of things that you can do uh, to succeed in medical school. And I don't want you to feel as though you are the only person who has had a hard time. Other people did it before you, other people will do it after you. What you are doing now is something that is going to benefit you. So make sure you do whatever you can to improve your chances of matching so that you don't go through what I went through. I don't want that. The point of this video is to help you guys be better than I was, right? So don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I also have Pinterest. Everything is down below. I have Twitter. I have my, obviously my YouTube channel, my health blog. Check that out. I'm going to be posting this video as a blog post within my blog. So make sure to check that out if you have any other questions or whatever. A lot of things are going to start happening in the next few weeks and months. I'll be moving to Alabama June 15th. So obviously it's going to be a hectic time. And then residency starts July 1st. Family medicine. I'm really excited. Um, I can't wait, but if you guys have any questions at all on my match, on match week and what that is, there's videos in my vlog, so make sure to, you know, go to my homepage and check those out, or I can put the links down below as well if you'd like. I think I might do that, actually. The videos on what match week is, what match day is, and where I match and all these things, my experience. Now, these are really good videos for you guys to watch if you're in third year or fourth year. It's great. If you're a fourth year who failed to match, this is also a great video for you guys to watch because I failed to match myself. So this is gonna be great for you guys to motivate you and help you out in your journey. So that is basically it for today. And I hope you guys have an amazing week. I'll see you next week. I'm not sure what I'm gonna talk about yet, uh, but hopefully it's gonna be something really cool. <laughs> all right, bye. Oh, you scared me. Woo.